So let's begin by asking you to find the sine and cosine of the following angles. So find the sine and cosine of 45 degrees. So I'm going to draw that 45 degree angle here in standard position. Notice that one of my rays lies on the x-axis and the vertice is there at the origin. If I trace up along that 45 degree line, it's going to be pointing to that root 2 over 2 value for sine and cosine. They're both right here. This right here, value 1, this would be the cosine, and this value 2 would be the sine. That's the x and y coordinate of this point that lies right here on the edge of that circle. Now I'm going to show you in this problem how to arrive at those exact values without just putting in the sine of 45 or the cosine of 45 in your calculator. What happens if I draw a line straight down from where that point lies on the edge of the circle? What values do we know here? Well, we know that this creates a 90 degree angle right here on the bottom, and we're dealing with a triangle now. This triangle shaded right here. Now I can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the missing sides. I also know that this side, the hypotenuse of this right triangle, has a value of 1 because the radius of the unit circle is 1, and that's the distance from the center right here to the outside edge of the circle. I also know that this is a 45 degree angle. All right, remember what you know about special right triangles. When you're dealing with a 45, 45, 90 special right triangle, so I'll draw a little example over here. This is your 90, and these two angles are going to be 45 degrees each. The arbitrary values for the sides are x, x, and x times root 2. So compare that to our triangle here. Well, we know that our value x root 2 is equivalent to 1. So I'm going to set 1 equal to x root 2 and we're going to solve for the value of x. Well, if I want to solve for the value of x, I need to divide off that root 2 on both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, we have 1 over root 2. On the right-hand side, the root 2's have canceled each other, and we just have x. But remember that we can't have a square root on a denominator of a fraction. So what I need to do is multiply by root 2 over root 2. When you do that, on top, you're going to get root 2 times 1, which is root 2. And on bottom, you're going to get root 2 times root 2, which is the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is simply 2. So for this value, x is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. So both sides of this triangle here have a value of root 2 over 2. Now notice that the sides of this triangle are the height of the triangle, referring to this height right here, that's the distance from the base on the x-axis up to that point where we join the circle right here, and we're also referring to the length of that triangle from the origin out to where it makes a 90 degree angle. So this length right here. So both those sides happen to be root 2 over root 2. So that's where we got these values from right here. So all the values here of x and y that are derived, all these points along the unit circle, happen to just deal with special right triangles. 30, 60, 90 right triangles and 45, 45, 90 right triangles. So you'll notice that all the angles here around the unit circle happen to be either values of 30 degrees or 45 degrees. So look at this first angle. It's a 30 degree angle here in standard position. That's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. The next value is 45 degrees. That's a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Then you've got a 60 degree angle. That's part of the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Then you've got a 90 degree angle just straight up, which is just value of 1 right there when we go straight up or straight to the left or right or down. Then you've got a 120 degree angle. Well, that 120 degree angle is just another 30, 60, 90. 
120 degrees is just 30 degrees past 90. So you're dealing with a 30, 60, 90. That 135 degree angle is just 45 degrees past 90, so you're dealing with a 45, 45, 90, and so on and so forth. So now let's go ahead and take a look at that second angle, that 210 degree angle. I'm going to go ahead and draw it here in standard position. And remember, we're trying to find the sine and cosine of that angle, 210 degrees. Now you could look at this and say, well obviously the x coordinate here is the cosine and the y coordinate is the sine. Bam, we're done. It's negative root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. But remember, I'm going to teach you how to get those exact values as opposed to just putting that into your calculator, the sine and cosine of 210, and solving for your answer. So the first thing we want to do is draw a right triangle. And we always draw from that point on the circle, we take a straight line down to the x-axis, no matter where the x-axis happens to be in relation to that angle. So we're going to draw that 90 degree angle in right here. Now notice that 210 degrees is just 30 degrees past 180. So now we're dealing with a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So I'll draw that in over here. Here's your standard 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle. And remember that the arbitrary values for these 30, 60, 90s the value across from the 30 degree is x, the value across from the 60 degree angle is x root 3, and the value across from the 90 degree angle is 2 times x. So that value across from the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse here. And the value across the 90 degree angle of the triangle we're dealing with has a value of 1, remember? Because it's the distance from the origin of the circle out to the edge of the circle, so it's the radius, and the unit circle always has a radius of 1. So for our triangle here, our arbitrary value 2x we know is equivalent to the value 1 in our unit circle. And we want to solve for x because that will give us the two remaining sides on this 30, 60, 90. So to solve for x, I'm just going to divide by 2 on both sides. On the left, the 2's cancel and we have x, and on the right, we have 1 half. So if you plug that back into our 30, 60, 90, this side right here, x, has a value of 1 half, and this side, x root 3, has a value of 1 half root 3, which is just the root 3 divided by 2. So that short side across from the 30 degree angle has a value of 1 half. Now notice that that's down below the x-axis, so on our graph that's a negative one-half because we're going down one-half point. And the value across from our 60 degree angle, so this is our 60, that value has a value of root 3 over 2. And notice that's going to the left on the x-axis, so going to the left on the x-axis means it's a negative. So we have a negative root 3 over 2 for the x-coordinate distance, that's the distance along the x-axis. Then if you go down to that point right here on the edge of the circle, we go down half a unit. So our value is negative 1 half. So you can just find the sine and cosine by looking at the unit circle. That's what all the values around the unit circle are. You can also find the sine and cosine by just plugging that into your calculator, the sine of 45 degrees or the cosine of 45 degrees. And you can also use this method with the right triangles in the Pythagorean theorem to find the exact value of sine and cosine on the unit circle. In the future, you'll learn how to take the tangent of these angles. The tangent value can be arrived at by just taking the value of sine so let's say that of 30 degrees, so our sine value is 1 half, and dividing by the cosine value, which is root 3 over 2. So if you took the tangent of 30 degrees and put that into your calculator, it would be the exact same answer as 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. Now by this time, you may have also learned about secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So let's take a moment and discuss those. Let's begin by discussing cosecant. Cosecant is simply 1 over sine. So, if you were looking for the cosecant value of any of the degrees or radian measures around the unit circle, 
you would simply take 1 and divide it by the sine value. For example, if you wanted to find the cosecant of 120 degrees, you'd take 1 and divide it by the sine value of 120 degrees. And so as you learn, the sine value of 120 degrees is root 3 over 2. So we'd have 1 over root 3 over 2. And then again, you don't want to leave that fraction on the denominator, so we're going to multiply by the reciprocal here, 2 over root 3. And this is going to become 1 now. So we're going to really get 2 over root 3. And you can't have a root on your denominator, so what you'd want to do here is multiply by a root 3 over root 3. When you do that, you have 2 root 3 on the numerator. And on the denominator, you have root 3 times root 3, which is the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So your cosecant of 120 degrees is simply going to be 2 root 3 over 3, and we arrived at that by taking 1 and dividing it by sine. Now let's take a look at the secant value. Your secant value can be arrived at by taking 1 and dividing it by cosine. So, for example, if you were given the secant of 150 degrees, you would take 1 over the x value of 150 degrees, which, hap which happens to be negative root 3 over 2. Negative root 3 over 2. Now, in this case, you'd get the same exact answer as you got on that cosecant problem because you're just dividing 1 by root 3 over 2, However, in this case, your answer would be negative. So, your answer would be negative 2 root 3 over 3. And again, we mu multiply by the reciprocal, and then we have to multiply by the root 3 to get rid of it. Just like we did with cosecant, and you arrive at this answer now for secant. Now let's take a look at cotangent. Cotangent is just like tangent, except to arrive at cotangent, it's 1 over tangent. So if you were asked to find the tangent and cotangent to the following angles, you could do that using the same method we used before. Let's begin with 5 pi over 4, and we'll start by finding the tangent of that. Well, 5 pi over 4 occurs right here at 225 degrees on the unit circle. And remember, to find the tangent value, we simply take the sine and divide by the cosine value. So in this case, we're going to take the sine, which is negative the square root of 2 over 2, and we're going to divide by the cosine, which was also a negative root 2 over 2. When you do that, you have a negative over a negative, which is a positive, and you have something divided by itself. Anything divided by itself is always 1. So our answer here is going to be a positive 1 for the tangent of 5 pi over 4. Now, if you were to take the cotangent of 5 pi over 4, it's simply 1 divided by the tangent. So cotangent of theta is simply 1 over tangent. And another way to say that is to simply reverse what the tangent formula is. So if tangent is sine over cosine, then cotangent is cosine over sine. And if you did the cosine over the sine for this problem, so our cosine value was negative root 2 over 2, and our sine value was also negative root 2 over 2, you're still going to get positive 1 in this case. So the cotangent of that is also positive 1. Let's do that one more time, except for 135 degrees in this case. So if you were to find the tangent of 135 degrees, we'd find that point on the unit circle. And we take the sine, so the tangent of 135 degrees is simply the sine value, which is root 2 over 2, divided by the cosine value, which is negative root 2 over 2. Again, in this case, we're dividing something by itself, so our answer is going to be 1. However, we're dividing a positive by a negative, so that makes it a negative 1. Now if you were to take the cotangent of 135 degrees, it's simply the cosine value divided by the sine value. So the cosine value is a negative root 2 over 2 divided by the sine value, 
which is a positive root 2 over 2. Either way, you get the same answer in this case to be a negative 1.